four years. Hello, y'all, and welcome to Young Folk Knits. If you're new here, my name is Casey, and on this channel, I love to share all about my love of fiber arts. I also occasionally share about living here in the wilds of Arkansas. Today's video is all about creating an outfit, and it's really based around a project that I have had on my needles for two and a half years, y'all. I am embarrassed to admit that this was cast on in February of 2022, and it is now two and a half years later, September 2024. That project is the Pressed Flowers Shawl. <laughs> so this is a mosaic knitting pattern by Amy Christoffers of Savory Knitting, and I love mosaic knitting but I especially love this very fun floral motif that is utilized in all of her pressed flowers patterns. I was so excited to make this shawl and I actually purchased a kit from a yarn dyer I found on Etsy, which is Birch Grove. And while the pattern calls for a sport weight yarn, this is a superwash DK base. That's close enough. I figured it would work out just fine. While the pattern actually called for a little bit more yardage, I thought it would probably be okay. However, I am a very loose knitter and I don't check gauge on shawls. I find it to be a little bit pointless <laughs> because unlike a item of clothing that needs to fit and gauge is very important to me if a shawl is slightly bigger or slightly smaller it's not a deal breaker i don't mind checking my gauge once i've started the project but i don't usually gauge swatch and then base my needle selection off of that i know i have worked on this off and on at different points for two and a half years and this week I decided to hit it and hit it hard. I was at the border. I picked it back up and I wanted to finish this project this week. I got to the border section, which is a little bit more densely packed with flowers. And I realized that I was going to be running very close on my main color for the end. In fact, I made it all the way to the bind off edge and I realized there's just no way that I've got enough to go all the way. So this pattern, you actually use a sewn bind off. This is similar to what you do for a tubular bind off, but instead it's not for one by one ribbing or two by two ribbing. It is a very simple method of just binding off that you can perfectly control the tension on and you can get a stretchier bind off than a normal knitted in pattern bind off. But it does require quite a bit of yarn and it can be a little finicky as far as getting knots and tangles in your yarn because you have such a long surface of sewing <laughs> you have to cover. So it's quite a bit of yarn that you're threading through each stitch. Same with the tubular bind off, no difference. I started and I knew I wasn't going to make it all the way through. I have pulled out all of my different green yarns that I could find. I found a few DK weight superwash yarns, probably the exact same base as what I am using. This is one from Craft Me Not Yarn Co. and it is called Olive Juice. It's gorgeous, beautiful green, but it's too light. This one is a really beautiful uh, Woolberry Fabrico color and it is their Superwash Merino Berry DK but it is too emerald green. It's got too much blue in it. So then I decided to start looking through a few different fingering yarns that I had. I found this one and it is Dusty Olive. It's too light, but then I found this one. I have no idea what the name of this color is. I can't remember, I don't have the ball band anymore, but it was kind of perfect. <laughs> This it is fingering, so I need to hold it double. And it is not a super wash. So it does look and act a little bit differently than the super wash yarn that I use for the rest of it. But I just need to bind off half of my shawl and that's it. So 
I think it'll be okay. I'm gonna do either a Russian join or a magic knot because it's, you know, it's in the bind off. This is how much I have left over of my uh, second ball of contrast color. I would say I probably have between a third and a half of a ball. So far, this is my bind off and I just have to bind off the other half. I think it's gonna work out really well. I want to create a little bit of a fun outfit to wear with it because one of my favorite things in the world is matching some of the fabrics that I have to some of my knitted items and sewing up an outfit that I know it's not the only thing I would ever wear it with as in I can only wear my shawl with this outfit. That's not the point of it. But I think it's so much fun to create an outfit that I love, that I can wear it together. And it just feels so fun and special and empowering to wear your own handmade outfit from head to toe. And it feels like an expression of who I am and what I love. Almost like my own painted piece of art, but instead it's what I'm wearing. <laughs> I have some linen fabric here. I have had in my stash for a little while. I love black and white gingham. Absolutely love it. And this is some really fun, just 100% linen, a nice small check. I think this fabric would be so versatile and pair with so many different things, but you still have that fun, almost graphic look to the black and white gingham check. I think it would work beautifully in a pair of pants. The pattern I am really interested in making a second pair of actually is the Panoma pants. I hope I'm saying that right. Pomona pants, excuse me, the Pomona pants. <laughs> so this is a pattern by Anna Allen. Anna Allen has a few different uh, fun patterns. I think there's some jeans. There's a really pretty shirt that I like. But these pants are very simple. That one thing I would say about these pants pattern is that you have to have a good deal of fabric. When I make, for instance, the bob pants, I can eke that out of like a meter and a half sometimes because these pants are actually cut where one whole leg is opened up and cut and then the other whole leg is you know opened up and cut you're not sewing a front and a back together and then another front and a back together instead you're cutting that whole leg out all at once you can imagine how big of a piece of fabric that that is and because of that you have to have some very wide and long fabric to make it work but if you have enough, then this is a great pattern. It's pretty easy. It's very beginner friendly. And I would recommend it as a great place to start on your pants making journey. The plan, I'm gonna cut these out. I'm going to finish my sewn bind off and I'm gonna create an outfit. Before I get started sewing though, I would like to say a quick thank you to the sponsor of today's video, which has tremendously helped me on my sewing journey. And that is Skillshare. Skillshare is actually the largest online learning community for creatives like us. It has such a wide breadth and depth of topics that whatever your interest is, you can find a class on Skillshare. While knitting will probably always be my first love, there are so many other crafts and hobbies that I would like to become more proficient in. One of them is art, and I found the most amazing class on gouache. I thought it was so much fun. I thought that the information was great and the style of painting is exactly what I'm drawn to. I love that while taking this class, I could see all the other members' projects because it gave me a little bit more of an idea of how to make the painting my own. But what I have really been benefiting from is the sewing classes. I've taken quite a few, but one I've recently enjoyed is Hand Sewing Basics, Work Wonders with Fabric, Needle, and Thread. This is a class which is taught by Bernadette Banner. I just think it's visually beautiful on top of everything else. Sewing can seem incredibly daunting, but this is great for both beginners and those who are trying to advance the skills that they already have. In this class, it helps you choose the right materials for your project, how to start and stop stitches cleanly, deciding what stitch to use when, and mixing and matching sewing techniques with ease. So I highly recommend this class. But the great thing about Skillshare is whatever your interest is, illustration, design, 
photography, sewing, knitting, web development, film, and video, then there will be a class for you with amazing instructors and a very helpful and supportive community. And that is why I'm so excited to partner with Skillshare again this month. The first 500 people to use the link in my description are going to receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. So choose a topic and you can get started today. Thanks again, Skillshare, for sponsoring this portion of the video. All right, time to get busy, y'all. I also think we're gonna go for a hike this weekend. I'm very excited about that. And I will probably take y'all along with me on what all I get accomplished this week. I'll check back in soon. y'all. I am back to give a brief update of a few fun things <laughs> that I was finally able to accomplish. I did get to cut out my pants. So here's a pocket <laughs> and I'm going to start sewing those hopefully today. But what I'm most excited about is that I finished my shawl. <laughs> I feel like this requires a celebration. Two and a half years of whip status and it is an F.O. today. <laughs> so excited. So I did have enough yarn to bind off, I want to say three quarters, but it wasn't a full three quarters, a little over half. And of course that just looks really good. Here's the the sewn bind off edge with the yarn that I used throughout the shawl. Here's the center point of the shawl. I was able to go across it still using the same yarn. And right here, I switched. And the great thing is that it's actually behind, so you can't really see it anyway. But the color blended beautifully. So I did soak this in hot water for a hot minute. Whenever I pinned it out to block, I did notice a difference between the edge that had the superwash yarn compared to the edge that had the non-superwash fingering weight yarn held double. The superwash grew more than the non-superwash. Thankfully, it was just on the bind off edge and I made sure to do it loosely enough that it wasn't anything that's gonna be noticeable once I had pinned everything in place. But I did see that the superwash yarn grew on its own quite a bit. It stretched out a lot, which superwash is known for doing. In the end, I'm so pleased with it. I am so happy that I was able to just use some leftovers that I already had. And I think it turned out so pretty. I am in love. Is this my favorite thing I've ever made? Possibly. Do I say that about everything when I finish it? A lot of times. This is one of my favorite things I've ever made. I love everything about it. Now, I think I'm gonna wear this mostly as a triangle shawl or like a triangle scarf where the triangle is in the front and I wrap it around and tuck it in. I think that's gonna be the best way for me to wear it. You're gonna really be able to see the border that way. That means it's time to sew my pants and I also need to fill out my maker's notebook because I didn't start this project this year or last year, I don't have a page for this yet, but because I finished it this year, I am going to create a project page in my 2024 Maker's Notebook. Yeah. 
Pomona pants and I have to tell you it was successful. I really really liked how they turned out. So there's two different views that you can do. One is a slim leg and one is a wide leg. I have only made the slim leg version before so this was my first time making this view of the pattern and it will not be the last. I really love the fit. I have to tell you I think it's such an easy pattern is very beginner friendly a very great intro into pants the construction is one of the easiest ways that you could possibly make pants the only downside is that you would have to cut it open to create some inseam pockets because there is no side seam to these pants only a seam that runs on the inside and because of that your only option unless you want to hack the pattern is to place patch pockets on which I only did on one side of the back which the pattern calls for but I went ahead and cut out another pocket piece and I'm going to go ahead and place that on the other side so I have a pocket on both butt cheeks I think both cheeks deserve a pocket and I will be sewing that on later this evening. Second reason is that I sewed it on my left butt cheek and I am right handed. So I really like to put things in my right back pocket and I'm going to go ahead and add a second pocket to this, but I love it. I did make the elastic too big. I do that a lot. I'm scared that it's going to be too tight. So I cut the elastic in what feels comfortable. And then by the time I get it sewn in, the weight of the fabric pulls on it and it is then too loose. <laughs> and then whenever I add my um, rows to the elastic, that just stretches it out even more because I'm 
pulling the elastic and the fabric to make it lay flat and be even. And that definitely happened in these pants. You know, I can't sew anything without using my seam ripper. Sometimes I'll sit down before project and I'll be like, okay, go. Don't have to use your seam ripper for this entire project. I have yet to reach that goal. I went back in and I had to rip out the seams just right here. I opened it up from the inside. I cut a length of the elastic out, re-sewed the elastic back together, and just sewed this back up. But it's a little bit more gathered right here at the very back than it is anywhere else. Uh, but when I'm wearing it, you can't tell, and it's in that spot that my shirt's always going to cover it huge fan. I did feel like for me the rise was a little bit too high on these so I had to shorten at the waist a little bit and I also man I am very tall. I'm 5'8 and I had to crop these pants because they were touching the floor and longer and I wanted them a little bit cropped. I did do that and as you can see in pictures or on the video um, they do hit like right at my ankles, but I might even crop them just a tiny bit more because it gives, almost gives like that kick flare, wide leg. I don't even know what the right word is. I guess cropped <laughs> look, which feels very vintage and cool to me. So love these. I made the size 18, I believe. I will be making more. I have a lot of linen and I will be making more of those. So I wore that with this white ribbed t-shirt. It's inside out because I just took it off yesterday. <laughs> so I was wearing it with this white ribbed t-shirt. This is a true white. It's not a yellow at all, which I love. And I paired it with my pressed flower shawl. And I thought this combo was super fun end of summer look. But as I was looking at different shirts, I pulled out this rusty red Remy Raglan, which is a short sleeve with the split front and the button. So I pulled this out. Just that little bit of rusty red deep color transitioned my outfit immediately to a fall vibe. And it really brings out the reddish orange in the flowers. This made me so happy because I now know I have multiple outfits that I can wear just from the pants and the shawl. I can continue to pair them together with different tops. When it gets cold, I can throw it on with a sweater and I love it. I also recently finished the book Shady Hollow, which definitely got me through that sewn bind off <laughs> at the end of my shawl. And it was such a cute book. So I love mysteries. And this was very whimsical. It was very cute. It was very well written. And it was all about woodland creatures. <laughs> so it takes place in a little town full of woodland creatures. And there is a murder. And then there is a second murder. And there is a news reporter, Vera Vixen, who is a fox. <laughs> and she is the amateur sleuth who figures out the mystery. So it is a little juvenile in the sense that it's about animals. And it is not super dark or anything like that. If you love the gritty, dark, hardcore mystery thrillers, this is not for you. If you love a little bit of light, whimsical, a little bit Animal Crossing meets Knives Out, then you'll probably like this. It's like a grown-up version of a child's book. It's refreshingly different. I do want to mention that I had released a video not too long ago. I had shared some winners from the Mosaic Mayhem pattern giveaway and I want to replace those up here again. I have not been contacted so if you see this don't forget you are a winner and I would like to put those names on the screen. So if you are a winner, please email me. So make sure and email to Casey at youngfolknits.com and I will get your pattern to you. Also want to put up on the screen the winner of the extra skein of Noral Madara that I'm very excited to send out. So also if you will email me at 
Casey at youngfolknits.com. I will get that shipped out to you. All right, y'all. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. If you enjoy videos like this, then please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so you won't miss out on any future video content. And until next time, happy knitting, y'all. Mm -hmm.